everyone, and welcome to episode four of Relegation Rescue at Ibar with me, the United City FM. So when we found Ibar at the bottom of the table halfway through the La Liga season, it felt that they were in a slightly false position, to be honest. They weren't due to be in the relegation uh, battle, but obviously the first half of the season didn't go so well. Since we've taken over, one win, two draws, one loss in four La Liga matches means that we have moved out of the relegation places, but only on goal difference. Today, we play a team below us in the table. Can we begin to get a bit of a gap between us and the relegation zone? Let's find out. Welcome back to Ibar. And yes, we are out of that relegation zone, but only on goal difference. If we go and check out the game that I've played since you and I were together last, we play every other game on these episodes. Uh, you'll see that we got a 2-2 draw against Levante. Levante is sitting in eighth position currently. We're now sitting in 17th after that draw. It wasn't a bad result, really. You can see that we went ahead early. Uh, uh, but ultimately, they clawed us back a little bit and eventually we got a 2-2 draw. Not bad, though. The, the performances so far, I think, have been pretty decent. We've uh, held our own against the likes of Villarreal. We got narrowly beaten by Atletico Madrid, beat uh, Hispalis. So you can see that I think... There is plenty of scope for us to get out of this relegation battle, potentially, and properly move forward. The next two matches are really key. Huesca are the opponents for today's match at home. And then we also have a home game against Cadiz in the next game off episode as well. And those two teams currently sit below us in the table. Since we've moved up a couple of spots, if we go into the Spanish first division, the La Liga, uh, you can't see that, can you? Let's go back a page uh, and just see if we can move it around enough for you to see. We can't. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> there's always something that's behind the face cam, isn't there? Whatever I choose, whatever place you put it in, there's always something. But anyway, you'll have to take <laughs> take my word for it. Uh, Ibar was sitting in 17th position uh, and Huesca and Cadiz are 19th and 20th, three, both three points behind us on 17 points. So you can see that if we were to win the next two matches, that's two teams below us that are six points behind all of a sudden, potentially, if not a little bit more. So it's really important that we try and find a way to get these two results. I do think that we were in a false position when I took over. Occasionally, you just get a little bit lucky with a, a, a save like this, where you holiday through half a season and see who's bottom and carry on with them. And on this occasion, I think this is a perfectly doable challenge. So let's see how we get on today against an opposition that are in and around us in the league and one that potentially on paper we should be beating. So straight into the tactical page we go. No need to uh, prevaricate any further. We're going in with our 4-4-2 formation that served us well so far. We've got one or two minor issues in terms of fitness. Uh, Pedro Leon is back uh, on the bench, can't quite start, but is in and around that squad. The one that's really dropped out of the squad is Papa Diop. Uh, he's just got a little bit of a knock that's going to last for a couple of days. So he's out of the squad. Everybody else is fit. So the first team 11 for today's match uh, against Huesca is Dimitrovic in goal. Korea at right back. Rodriguez at left back. Oliveira and Bigas in central defence. Alvarez, Exposito in central midfield. Kike on the right. Inui on the left. And in reach and Kike up top. And a 12-man bench to support them whenever we need them. So let's Let's get into today's game and see what happens. So, having been bottom of the table when we took over, it's not very often you get to use the we're favourites for a reason team talk in this kind of circumstance, but that's the, the, the option that we've been given. So I've pumped the fists and told them we are favourites. Go out there and make sure as to everybody's under no doubt as to why that is. We are a better team than we've been showing for this first part of the season. We need to turn this around and that's my task, isn't it? To uh, rescue this side from relegation. Huesca coming in with a 4-2-3-1. We're 
them with our 4-4-2 that's worked very nicely for us so far. In the last match, I rotated a few players into the starting lineup just to see a few new players and a few new faces in terms of getting used to the squad. And they worked pretty well against Levante, who are sitting in that sort of eighth position. So a draw against them was not a bad result. Um, and so ultimately, it looks like we've got a squad that we can work with here. But it will be Huesco with the first opportunity on the highlight, working down the left-hand side nicely at the top of the box. And there was a good opportunity there and a good block on the shot. Enrique picks it up, though. Loose ball all the way up to the other end of the pitch. Uh, Enrique runs in, and that is a very nice goal. Uh, Enrique worked down the right-hand side, having gained the ball pretty much on the halfway line, sort of that sort of area. Charges down the pitch. There he goes uh, under a little bit of a pressure from one defender, but makes it all the way pretty much to the edge of the box. Crosses the ball into the top of the six-yard box and his strike partner, Kike, is stood there with a defender on him, but gets to the ball first and sweeps the ball into the back of the net for a 1-0 lead for us early in the game. Six minutes in and the highlights keep coming and anyway, nicks the ball for us down that left-hand side, tries to get it into Kike again in the, at the top of the box, but doesn't quite manage it and Huesca go long, but we sort it out at the back. And sweep it out to the right-hand side. Enrique getting involved again. Uh, the second Kike, the different spelling on the right-hand side, just to confuse me, takes over possession of the ball. Exposito getting involved. Lots of good interplay here. And it's Correa, the right-back, on the uh, support role uh, behind the play on this right-hand side that drifts inside the box. And eventually just gets the ball. You can see him getting involved there quite way out. And then makes a little bit of a run just at the last minute when the gap opens up. And puts the ball very calmly in that far corner. And after seven minutes of the match, we take a 2-0 lead. And we're looking very, very good. <laughs> it's very surprising how, a, how much a little bit of confidence can get you a very, very long way. And we're just beginning to see that this side are a little bit better than maybe where they were. Those games against the likes of Villarreal and Atletico Madrid, whilst the results didn't go necessarily for us, we competed pretty well against them, some of the bigger guys in the, uh, in the tournament. And ultimately, that's given us a little bit of a boost. Uh, Huesca had a chance then, got through on goal, one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, poked the ball at the goal, couldn't quite get the power on it. The goalkeeper sorts it out. And there's a highlight again. It's a very highlight-heavy first 25 minutes of the game. Huesca with the throw-in down that side. Eventually, we almost nicked the ball there. We got a good foot in, but it drifted back to one of the Huesca players. And they get a good cross in. And eventually, the header at goal, the goalkeeper, Dimitrovic, was able to sort it out. And clears really nicely. Controlled very well in the attacking third by our guys. And it sent for the uh, second goal scorer, Correa, to put it into the box. Gets it in there. But a block on the first shot and then there's a second chance and the goalkeeper's behind that one. But the pressure, we're still keeping the pressure up, which is very good to see. Again, it's a Huesca uh, throw in. Again, they had a good attempt at goal. This time they hit the woodwork, a sweeping cross across the face of goal, hit that far post and went to safety for us. So they are attempting, uh, they are putting us under a lot of pressure with their attempts at goal. It must be said they're doing okay, but so far we've had a little bit of the rub of the green and that's a very good clearance again by Dimitrovic and we almost got a third goal and possibly should have. Anyway, on that run on the uh, far side of the pitch into the penalty box, into his stride, fires the ball at goal but it goes narrowly wide. Exposito rides the challenge there. Uh, Enrique again drops in to get involved in the play. Sergio on the ball over the top for anyway. What a lovely ball that was. Just enough curve to get there. Sweeps it out. And that's another really nice goal. And this is the style of play that we were looking for. In the 4-4-2 scenario, working those wide areas to get crosses in the box for the two strikers plus maybe a third player that's found himself in there. This time, it's Enrique that just drops out of the six-yard box just as that cross is coming in and manages to find his, himself in some space and hooks the ball with his left foot on the volley and puts it in the back of the net for 3-0 up. 40 minutes in, we've got a couple of minutes left of this first half and we couldn't really have asked for much better. They've had a number of shots themselves, 
But the quality in front of goal hasn't been there quite for them, where it has been for us. We've scored three goals from 11 shots at goal, six on target. They've had eight shots at goal, two on target. Our XG rating of 1.5 is only half of the amount of goals we've actually scored. So you can see the, the quality of finish has been excellent. <clears throat> Excuse me. 50-50% possession. So they are in the game. We do have to properly concentrate and see this out in the second half. Uh, a goal for them early in the second half would just make it a little bit more nervy that they could potentially come back in and take some of these points away. But so far, this has been pretty spectacular. So outstretched arms. I'm very happy with the way you're playing so far, but keep it up. And then we'll just go into this second half and see how we get going before we have to make any uh, personnel changes potentially. Anyway, with a corner kick... We win the loose ball at the top of the box. We put it back in again. <laughs> and there is another goal for us. And again, it's a cartwheeling, celebrating Enrich, who just again gets a good connection on the ball. Anyway, with the corner kick in, and Sergio picks up the ball in midfield, just outside the penalty box, puts it back to Inouye. Cross comes in, and Enrich at the top of the six-yard box has got a yard of space around him. He's managed to find a good position for himself. The defence got dragged around by a couple of other players, and he just heads the ball on very nicely into the back of the net for 4-0 after 50 minutes. And this relegation-threatened um, side, all of a sudden, when playing teams in and around us in our league position, show that we are actually doing, um, we weren't doing as well as we should have been potentially before I took over. But I'm happy about that. It means that what I've done so far has, has worked out well. Style of play suits the players. We've been competing nicely in all of the other matches. And now we can begin to uh, think about moving forward and asking ourselves a question. And this is the question I've got for you today. This challenge looks doable. We've got Cadiz coming up who are relegation threatened as well in the next match. We can get six points from two games and we're laughing potentially. So where are we going to finish this season? That is my question for you. I think we're going to be able to avoid this relegation battle, to be honest. I think this team is too good. But how high up can we now go? There's uh, several teams ahead of us within about three, four, five points of us. So there's a few that we could potentially leapfrog in the next few day, uh, games, should I say. Um, but yeah, that's my question. Where are we going to finish? So uh, for the rest of this game, we're going to make a couple of changes. There's a couple of obvious ones in here. Exposito not having the best of games. Uh, Kike on the right-hand side picked up a yellow card and not playing brilliantly. So Leon having just come back from injury, we'll give him a few minutes to see if we can help his fitness out. Atienza comes in instead of Exposito as well. The rest of the team are playing very well, but where can we rest someone? And I think it's Inoue who in his like early to mid-30s is going to uh, be quite... Uh, you'd imagine that he'd need a rest every so often. That's what I'm trying to say. And Brian Gill comes in for him down the left-hand side. So we can play in exactly the same way. We've got two 11s in our squad. The balance of this squad I worked on during my week in the January transfer window before we moved out of the transfer window just to balance this side properly. So there's two set 11s in there that we can rotate like for like and keep the way that we play going. And so ultimately, we've got 15 minutes to go and we are extraordinarily comfortable. 4-0 up. No problems at all. You can see they've had the shots at goal. We've had 18. They've had 15 themselves, but they haven't made it count. And again, they might have kicked them, uh, shot themselves in the foot here. There is a penalty review in our favour, and we'll see what happens. We are going to get the penalty, and Reach takes it, and the goalkeeper makes a very good penalty stop, and they clear the ball. So a chance there for um, potentially a 5-0 scoreline, doesn't quite come about, almost does on that occasion too. Leon with a, a very good free kick on this near side to the far post for a header at the far post, but it goes over the top. We put them under so much pressure and ultimately it's going to pay off with a very, very good win and we're just about just about holding on to our clean sheet as well. There was a couple of attempts in that little bit of highlighted play that maybe they should have done better with, but we just about got away with it. Still have that clean sheet. We've got seconds remaining of the match. It's gone all the way through to the goalkeeper and the full-time whistle goes 
And then Rich gets two, Correa gets one, Kike gets one, and we beat Huesca 4-0. And this is what this team is capable of. So just before we figure out exactly what's happening next episode, let's just look at the table. We're sitting here in 17th position still, but we've closed the gap on some teams above us and opened the gap over a couple of them below us as well. There's lots of teams around us that have played one less game than we have, so that could impact us. But on 23 points after 24 matches, so there's still 14 games for us to play this season, we are only about five points behind 11th placed Getafe at the moment. Obviously, games in hand for teams around us, as I say. But where do you think we're going to finish? How high up in this division, in this uh, bottom half of the table, let's say, how high up can we finish? Let's see what you think in the comments below. We've played some tricky games so far. We've got a good game coming up against bottom place caddies in the next game. But let's just go check into the schedule what's coming up for next episode because we play every other game on the episodes as, as we've spoken about before. So we've got Atletico Pamplona next. If we go just uh, sneak back into the table and find where they are they are sitting in ninth position so we got a draw against Levante in the last game that we played that I played should I say can we get a similar result against Pamplona next episode that would be pretty good a point against those sort of mid-table oppositions a couple of wins here and there against some of them and we are laughing for the rest of the season really uh, but it's going to get a little bit trickier because uh, following that episode, we then play Barcelona. We've still got Real Madrid, Sevilla, Valencia, Valladolid, all still to play. There's some good teams in and around us still that we have to go through this season. But I think we're going to avoid this relegation battle quite convincingly. How high up can we go? We'll have to wait and see. But thank you for joining me today. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and join my United City community. The more the merrier. Click that like button on this particular episode. That'll help me get seen by lots more people. Until next episode, take care of yourselves. I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.